Well, Father has already introduced me. But I would like to say again that I am Reverend Father Cornelius Omonokwa, the immediate past director of Mission and Dialogue. And I was also the Episcopal Secretary for Interreligious Dialogue and Ecumenism. Well, I worked as a consultant for the Commission for Religious Relations with Muslims in the Vatican. The topic before us today is Anthropological Foundation of Mission. And I would like us to handle first anthropological inquiry. And I would like us to start with some kind of conversation. So I would like to ask a question. Has anyone here among us, has somebody seen you for the first time? The person just sees you. He has never seen you before. And you have never had issues with a person. But the person just does it like your face. Anything about you, he detests or she detests. Has it ever happened to anybody here? Okay. It has happened there. Eh? Now, have you ever seen somebody? You just see the person for the first time. And the person, good morning, Father. What's good in the morning? He look at you up and he just is and he doesn't like you at all. As, have, have, oh, you don't like the person. Has it ever happened? Yeah. You know, we are preparing to go out on mission. And we are going to encounter a lot of people. So we are trying to inquire why. What happened? Why is it like that? You know, one day, the great philosopher Socrates was just trolling in the garden. And another person saw him and he stopped him. He said, why sage? At what time do I begin to teach my child wisdom? And Socrates looked at him and he said, how old is your child? So my child is five years old. And Socrates said, you are six years late already. <laughs> he said, you are six years late already. But the child is five years old. And this is the reason. We human beings, we are in contact with the external universe, the external world. Whatever is happening around goes into us through the five windows of the body. And which are these five windows? The eyes, the ears, the mouth, the nose, skin. the skin, your feelings. So, the external perception back on the cortical section of the brain, and this is transmitted by way of encoding, it goes to the short term memory store. 
that is in empirical psychology. And it stays there for a short time. It is further encoded and it goes to the long-term memory store. And in Freudian psychology, the long-term memory store is a subconscious. Whereas the short-term memory store is a conscious mind. So that is why a lot of things are stored in our subconscious. You would think it's not there, but it's there. So when you sleep, sometimes what you have in the subconscious comes to the fore. Come to the conscious mind. I mean, the, the long, short term. And you begin to see those things in the form of dream. And this is called recurring dream. Or you have read and read and read and read. You have an examination. You are going to an exam and you just feel that you are black. Then immediately you see the question. The answer start coming. And that is because when you are awake, when you move around, when you are walking, the conscious mind is awake. And when you sleep, the conscious mind is asleep and the conscious mind is awake. Now let us go back to Socrates. Why did he say that you are six years late? Whereas the child is just five years old. The formation of character begins a few moments to the fertilization of the egg by the sperm. In that case, the woman must be prepared. The womb must be prepared in a way and manner that that womb can accommodate a baby. A lot of women, some women have miscarriages. And that is because the womb is not settled emotionally. And so women are put on bed rest so that they don't have miscarriage. We know there are other physical reasons why women can have miscarriages, especially when it has to do with the cervix. Or maybe they have to tie something to make sure it stays. But emotionally, what makes a woman pregnant is the stability and calmness of the womb. If I make a proverb in my language, you will say this for that does boy. <laughs> they say it is only, let me just put it in a mild way. I don't want to use my language. Because Father Greg will begin to wonder what is this man talking about. I know you. <laughs> what does that mean? It is only when a woman is happy that she can be wet enough for sex. That is the meaning. So when a woman is terribly sad, you can, except you rape her and get her bleeding. So what is the meaning of this? That the process of a baby coming into the world, you have to make sure there is peace in the heart of the body of the woman. The heart and the body of the woman. In the case of the man, when a man is completely depressed, completely depressed, sad, even if you drink Viagra, you cannot have an erection. So now, the baby is in the womb, right? As long as that baby is in the womb, the woman needs TL seal from the husband. DLC means tender, loving, care. You know, there are a lot of things we traditionally they say 
the child is an Ogbanji, the child has a mark on the body and all that. But a simple scientific explanation is this. Now, the baby in the womb that stays there for nine months or more, does it eat a bar? Does the baby eat a wedu? Does it eat a mala? How is the baby surviving in terms of diet? It is what the woman eats that the baby feeds them through the placenta. Sometimes some men will say, Oh, my wife is always giving birth to guests, guests, guests. They will think it's the fault of the girl, the woman. Whereas it is a man who is responsible. Because a man produces X, Y chromosomes. Whereas a woman produces what? X, X. So it is you, the man, who determines the sex of the baby. Now, see on Socrates. Let us assume now that the baby is coming into the world. You are now in the labor world, right? And the midwife, uh, the midwife is telling the woman, we see in labor, push. Ha! 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 Push! Oh, the head is coming out now. Push! And the woman we just collapse the leg. And the nurse will just slap you and open your leg with her hand. You want to kill your baby? Something has happened. Do you know what has happened? That baby coming into the world has gotten a blackout. That baby has gotten what? A blackout. And so something is going to happen. As the baby is growing up, they have to be debriefing. That baby, if it's not properly debriefed, will never, ever be a valiant soldier. Because it will not be able to look from the height. will only be able to pass through a tunnel in terms of military training. And that baby will not be able to sleep when there is light on. So that is why you could have a roommate. Somebody sleeps in your room. You, don't, you can't sleep when the light is on. But that person enjoys his sleep only when the light is off. This becomes the difference. So how do you manage, how do you cope with that person? Or this person likes pounded yam. But the other person say, I don't eat swallow. <laughs> Something has happened as the child was growing up. Then, maybe that person to that child may not be able to sit at the window seat of an aircraft because you will not be able to look down. So when you are dealing with people, you ask, you see, find that something, you are dealing with human beings that have heritage, that have some biological, psychological, anthropological things that follow them. But you may not even be aware you are behaving, you may not be able to I explain your behavior. Sometimes some people will just say, why are you like this? You say, hey, is it my fault? So when you say, is it my fault? You are right, it's not your fault. I had a friend when I was in secondary school. If you want to say, please, can I have your Bible? Say, Give me that Bible. So politeness is not just in the dictionary, but he doesn't know he's hurting somebody. Then you say, but what's your problem? You say, just because I asked for Bayro. <laughs> it's an anthropological problem and psychological too. So this is why you see that as you are growing up, there are some questions you will need to ask yourself. 
For example, how old was your father when you were being conceived? How old was your father when you were being conceived? And how old was your mother when you were being conceived? Were you wanted? Or you were just an accidental discharge? You say, well, it is don't enter, I can't do abortion. Let the child stay. Because I've heard of a man who immediately heard that the wife gave birth to a triplet, he ran away. I de- denied completely that he's not the father, that they don't want triplet in their, in their family. That the woman should come, let them go and do DNA for the, three, for the triplet first before he accepts the paternity. What event surrounded your birth? What complications did your mother experience when you were being born? In what conditions did you grow up? Was it a calm environment? Did your father prefer your dad siblings to you or your mother just manage you? Did you experience parental love? What were your fears and phobia when you were growing up? What were the fears and phobias of your parents for you? What are your frequent ailments? Were you a sickler? Or are you a sickler? Were you always sick? Do people always understand you? What is the genetic disease in your family? Are you sharing from that disease? What is the common temperament in your family and community? Are you from a family that is terribly aggressive? Before you say Jack Robinson, you have gotten a slap. Or a family that has to be with, uh, you know, let it grow, let it be. Under what religious environment were you born? Are you a Christian just because your parents were Christians? Because when you fall away from Greece, there are some reasons. It's either when you grow up, your parents were never Christians, and as an adult you now decide to become a Christian, you will be a very strong Christian. You will never fall apart. But when you grow up with parents who are Christians and dedicated, and at a point you say, oh, dad and mom, they are doing the right thing. I accept them all and sink her. Who can sink her? Then you'll be a strong Christian. But maybe you grow up with parents who are Christians, but they are not too strong. They are always fighting and quarreling in the house. And you say, this doesn't work, it's after all. Then when you grow up, you leave the Catholic church and look for another place to go. So these are questions you can meditate upon. Let me maybe share with you some experiences. Maybe two examples we'll do here. Here, the examples I'm going to give has to do with the needs for debriefing. And what is debriefing? The difference between debriefing and healing of memory. There are two things. And I will give you an example with me, myself. I'm one person who was privileged to be exposed to all these questions as a child. And I want to sound this way. A young woman got married. For eight years, there was no child. And the eight year got back to a girl, got back to a girl. And she had to wait for another 
nine years. And the husband will say, well, it's either you give me a boy or you go. So this young woman, there was a visitor in the house. There was a visitor in the house. And they told the husband, they said, look, there is a light following this woman. This woman will give birth to a child and the whole world will hear about him. The man was, the, the man was not a native doctor. So my father said, okay, I'll give you one more year. But meanwhile, this woman didn't even know that she was already pregnant. This woman, the parents, the father was a Muslim and the mother was a native doctor and a herbalist. So she went back to her mother and said, Mom, I don't understand the way I'm feeling. He looked and laughed. He said, you are carrying a child. He said, at my age, but I have stopped seeing that thing women used to see. You know what that thing is? Menstruation? Um, in other words, I have reached menopause. And the mother laughed. He said, you are carrying a baby. You're going to be a great baby. So eventually, this baby was born. But before then, people were already insinuating that maybe the woman is a witch. How could you be pregnant at this age? So I said, maybe the leaf he went to cut in a bush in a people's farm, that is what is carrying in her well, stomach that they call a baby. So when the child was born, the child had a series of names. So I know the child anyway. I've met the child, I've encountered the child, that I can present a picture to you. You know where the child is now? Is the one talking to you. So I was called Afebu, that is by my uncle. We have come to increase the number of our family. My mother said, Umuso, the whole world I've heard. And my father called the child Correct me, man. The Lord is with us. And a grandfather, Matana, says, In me, you know, I'm now free from people's gossips. <laughs> and then his own grandfather, Omonokwa, said, Iboadi, what shall this child turn out to be? This is the background to the story I want to tell you about the briefing. So as I was growing up, we had. One of our big mommy in the house. I grew up to see her as if she was my biological mother. I would go to the river to fetch water. And my mom would say, take that bucket of water to your mom. Then I would do that. Then go back and fetch for my mother. Then my mother would cook. Soup, you say, go and bring Gary from Mama. Or she will make Gary or a bar or a panda there, and you say, go and bring soup. She was always pushing me to this woman. So I fell in love with this old woman, and I had no qualms. So after my ordination, precisely 1919, I drove a car from Benin to my village, Irekba, for the very first time. And this old woman was sick, really sick. So I took her to the hospital, Notre Dame Hospital, then. And the hospital is now called Sakta Maria. She was well, and I was happy. I needed a hug from an old woman. But what did I get? Tears. She was crying. And why was the content of the tears? Oh, if I had killed you, who would have taken me to the hospital now? I could not reconcile my action and the way. So I said, well, he said, you see, I, had, I, I didn't like your mother. We were always quarreling, and I needed you dead. I said, is that so? So I went to my mom and said, look at what this woman is. She said she did worse things. Then why were you always pushing me to her? My mother made two parables. First, she said, Akarom monobo remo omobo okbo moli. Do you know what it means? When you trust your child to a, native, to a witch, 
the witch will never kill your child because the witch knows that whatever happened to you, they will suspect. Since it's already a witch, they will suspect that is the one. So it will make sure that you are okay. And secondly, Okbofio, Oromote, that hatred in the heart of a child kills a child. So I didn't want you to grow up with hatred in your mind. I wanted to grow up with a clean mind to love everybody. That's what my mom told me. But remember, my mom did not attend primary one, not nurses. She was completely analphabet. My mother was, in the English context, she was an illiterate. But in traditional context, Father John and I would call her a sage akin to Socrates. And of course, Socrates didn't go to primary school too. But he was a, he's the wisest man. He did not write anything. Whatever you read about Socrates is what Aristotle put down for him. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So that is the briefing. The briefing is the things that happened to you as you were growing up. Now, the second example. This one happened when I was already a priest. I was in charge of marriage counseling. There was this young man that was always coming to my office. No, it's not a young man, it's a young lady. I would come and complain about the husband who was a Casanova. You know what's the meaning of Casanova? Jumping from one guy to the other. So one day I told this woman, please let me see this man, the husband of yours. And the man came. I said, but look at the complaints we are getting. He said, Father, I'm not jumping from one. I just keep one girlfriend, and I have my reasons. Oh, my God. I said, what are the reasons? He said, this woman has one child. Since I married her, we've not had sexual relationship up to 10 times. That each time I approach this woman, she'll be shouting, thief, 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 thief. I'm robber, I'm robber. Rapist, rapist, rapist. So when you approach this woman sexually, the woman becomes knocked. So she's left her thing for how? That's why I want to pick my own, at least. So I said, but have you find out why this uh, woman is doing what he's doing? He said, I don't know. She's from so-so place. Me, I'm from so-so place. Mine's apart. So one day, I called the woman. I said, we need to talk. She tell me exactly what, what, is, what your husband said the other day. Is it true? All men are rapists. All men are arm robbers. All men, all men. Fat. I said, but what of your father? I don't know about him, but I know men are terrible. This is what happened to this girl. She was just 12 years old. See a very clean virgin. Arm robbers invaded their house. I'm moving from the briefing to healing of memory. And she was gag raped by six men. So it, were, it was an armed robber that is virgin her. So her first experience of sex that was registered in the subconscious was pain, aggression, and violence. So for her, that is the definition of sex. And of course, she didn't want to marry. She had a master's degree before she got married. And it, I think she was virtually forced into that marriage because she hated men with passion. Hmm. I said, have you told your husband, God forbid bad thing. I cannot discuss that kind of thing with that beast. I said, but did he, he said, the man is scary, no? He buys me whatever I want. Give me clothes, give me what? That one that makes him a beast, I hate. So I called the man. We have to involve the family, all right? And I told the family of the woman, why did you not allow the husband to know what happened to your child? He said they were afraid that if the man knows, he will not marry the girl again. Anyhow, we have to get a reverend sister who is a counselor. The sister was wonderful. They were able to build her up, cancel her. So four months later, the young lady came to my office smiling. You could see the light on the face, brilliant. 
Father, thank you very much. I'm not enjoying my marriage. I said, your husband is not following. He said, no, he doesn't go out and get the fat. It is sweet. <laughs> Thanks for the reverend sister who was able to heal her memory. Why reverend sister? Why did it not, was it not a married woman? Because this sister combined two things. First, she's a woman. And two, a counselor. And three, she gave, she presented herself to this lady as a mother figure. So that is healing of memory. So when you are living with people, you are on mission, you see people, you know, Christ is all over the place. Even your immediate community, maybe your superior don't even like you. And maybe you don't have any reason to, you know. So... These are things you should consider that maybe this person I'm dealing with has some anthropological, psychological heritage. Like a novice misrep came to report to me that she needed to sack, to, you know, to, to drive away a novice. I said, why? He said, no, it's always so. I said, does he talk to anybody? He's just scared of people. I don't know. Father, I'm tired. I said, yeah, novice mistress. You know that your work, your job description, first of all, you have to be empathetic. You have to do a kind of, you know, a lot of things you need to do, aptitude tests. Find out what is the background of this, your novice you want to drive away. He said, Father, can I bring the novice to you? I said, why not? He brought the novice. He said, Mother General, please say, take out of this. Leave me alone with this young woman. You know what happened to that girl when it was grown? The girl was small. The mother died. And the girl was now handed over to another woman who happened to have been the husband, uh, the wife of the And he treated her like the meanest slave in the world. So the woman never had that, the novice, sorry, never had that figure of a mother. So the figure of a mother in her mind is terror. A mother terrorist. In fact, it was based on that she ran away from the house to go to the convent. So when I now called the novice minister, I said, can you be a mother to this girl? He said, this girl, how can I mother, be a mother to a woman who does not, who don't even understand? So I now said, novice, can you tell your story before this young novice mistress? And she did. This novice mistress cried out her eyes. It's like, I'm teaching her to be in, in, as I'm talking to you now. That novice is finally professed, and he still see mother, because he became a mother general later. Though. Now, she's no more a mother, she's getting older now, and the only daughter that woman has now is the woman she wanted to drive away, drive away from, the no, from the novice. Yet. There are a lot of ex seminarians out there who would have been wonderful priests. And there are some who pretended so well that they are made bishop today. Yes. <laughs> and there were some novices who, who would have been expelled, but they are superior generals today. And there are some who would have been superior generals, but they are expelled. So these are things that are happening in our world. So, 